a rainy day out there again. Go figure. It's supposed to be raining for another week straight. <laughs> so I just flung some arrows into the target again to start the day off. And then uh, I'm going to get a handful more people heard before I leave. By the time you guys are watching this, I'm going to be on the west coast of Vancouver Island, either offshore or in the forest or on the shoreline. <laughs> one or the other for sure and of course I'll be packing my camera with me and sharing as much as I can. Now um, one thing I sure hope is um, that what we are all doing here catches on with not only this topic but with many other ones. Um, this should be a blatant example of um, just how powerful the voice of the people is and uh, how important it is for the people to, to be able to speak freely without consequence, right? Speaking free, lead, and, and supporting and helping each other. Imagine if we could do that with every topic on the globe today, instead of uh, what's really going on today. But anyway, what do we got going on in the inbox? I haven't even had a luck. I'm just going to... Uh, Grab one and go. First, I have to do a quick glance to make sure it is a uh, an experience or somebody needs help. Somebody needs to get something up their chest. Um, there's a lot of people email me just to go on rants, <laughs> which I believe me, I fully understand. And uh, I don't know what this one's about. It has a few pictures, so let's read this one to start off. This is titled Sasquatch Worldwide and Tidbits on Little People. Yeah, the little people thing is something I have very, very little knowledge on myself. Very little, but apparently there is a lot of knowledge out there about this topic. Hello Steve, I emailed you a few months ago, but not sure if you got it or I emailed the wrong address. Apologies if you've already read this out. I usually catch up on all your videos. I miss a few sometimes. I'm from India. I love your channel and mission. I'm a trained financial news journalist for a multinational mainstream news company and will give my details at the end for verification. Please don't use my name. I'm not scared, but I'm very young with a lot to lose. But I promise you, once I'm set, I'll hold every evil bastard in the world accountable. I hope you do. And uh, try not to do it alone. Try to gather up as many more like-minded people as you can and get that shit going. I'll keep this as short as I can, but before I start, let me say that, given my background, Steve, you are 100% right about the mainstream media, both news and entertainment, without a doubt. The elite and politicians and politicians shit on the face of the media, and the media takes that shit and distributes it to the people like candy. And the unfortunate part is, many people eat it. But this is a discussion for another time. 100% on the same page, as you know. Let me start by confirming what many people may already know. Bigfoot is present worldwide. The problem is, most people mostly hear about the sightings in North America because information gathering and flow is very advanced there compared to the rest of the world. But, while Americans and Canadians struggle with the government's public ignorance and denial of the existence of Sasquatch, things have been different here in India. In 2019, the official handle of the Indian Army Twitter page posted a few pictures, attached please share, of footprints which they said belonged to the Yeti, aka Abominable Snowman. The Yeti has the same characteristics as the North American Bigfoot, including the color. Even Sir Edmund Hillary, who was one of the first two men to climb the world's highest mountain, Mount Everest, claimed to have seen this being. The Yeti is also respected by the Buddhist monks in the regions and his history goes back thousands of years. And I'm trying to track down some army personnel who've had sightings. While the Yeti is the most famous, there are other beings as well. In Northeast India, there is a being called Mandi Burung, which is a bit shorter, but has brownish and orangish hair. There was a report once where a villager said that they killed and eaten one of these beings. And some scientists have tried to investigate the sightings. I will paste all the links at the end of this mail to share with the rest of the community. In Bangladesh, there's a creature known locally as Ban Manush, 
which translates to ape man. And there's another similar being in Pakistan called Barmanu. I'm sure you will have difficult. I'm, sh I'm sure you will have difficulty pronouncing these names. Ha <laughs> ha! No doubt. Lastly, in China and Central Asia, people will tell you about the Yeren and Almas, respectively. Unfortunately, most of Southeast and Central Asia has little or no access to the internet, and news reports are extremely rare, so it's very difficult to sketch a broader picture of what's happening here. And there are several other such beings in Southeast Asia, and many more which we may have not even known about because the flow of information is disabled in this part of the world. I'm, tr I'm trying to start an organization that can collect stories and information like this around the region, as I believe it's essential for this global community and these beings. There's one other thing I need to talk about. Your channel is dedicated to the big hairy beings, but I want to know your thoughts about the little forest people or the fae. Yes, I'm talking about fairies, elves, goblins, gnomes, etc. Some of your recent shares have been about them, but unfortunately, I've not yet seen an extensive and serious discussion regarding these beings. Even some people interested in the paranormal dismiss the foe. Fay, sorry. As I said, Steve, I am a trained journalist and hence take an investigative approach to things. The legends and stories of little forest people are found in every culture and region of the world. They're more prevalent than maybe even Sasquatch-like beings. There are several stories of little people in India too. In fact, there's a place called Fairy Hill in the country. I'll be visiting an area that has some evidence of the possible existence of these beings soon and will write to you in more detail on this broad topic after that. I'd love to hear more about this from the community as I believe it has a big part in the 411 phenomenon. I have a great interest in these topics, but I have no one to share my passion with, so thank you very much for giving me a platform and hearing me out. If you ever plan to visit India, hit me up for sure. Best, here we go. Oh, hold on, you said to keep your name. <laughs> you left me your name. All right, lucky I caught that. Sorry, okay, I got that, man. I just, I just chopped your name out. Sorry, I almost shared it. And there's the tracks, typical pattern, straight line. Probably a big spread. And uh, yes, I agree that you need to, you need to uh, investigate this more and get a hold of, find more like-minded people like yourself. I'm sure they're there. But I have a feeling, like I've been to Southeast Asia and I always often thought about the one way anywhere in the world to gather information would be go to the rural communities and speak to the elders or speak to whoever, right? And then you, the information will flow. And you're right, we haven't heard too much on the little people, the fairies and gnomes, etc. Have I ever have, had an interest myself? I can't say I've, I have had because I have not heard very much on those topics at all. And obviously I've never ran, anything like, ran into anything like that myself. So it's right over my head. But, if it is as popular as you have shared, yeah man, hit that shit up and get it to us. Alright, we got your back, uh, your voice will be shared here, word for word, and um, somehow, maybe you could possibly share this video once you hear it and see it come across it and share this video with as many people as you can in your area. I know there, there might possibly be a language barrier for a lot of people, maybe, I don't know, but it might be a good idea for you to do, for you to do that and start, and start generating that little bit of a storm over there to get people talking and to show people that there's other people in the world who are seeing things that we're not taught about and it would be a, a very good thing for them to chime in and share what they know, get it off the chest, whatever, do the same as what we're doing here and uh, do it over there for sure. So anyway, thanks again for, for contacting, sharing. You've been heard, and we're looking forward to hearing more from you. Okay, man? Be safe out there, too. Be safe out there. All right, what do we got here? This is the title. It seemed to roll around my tent. It's nothing I'd crave. Feel free to use my name and city. Hi, Steve. First of all, thank you for your unthwarted efforts at bringing being a message man for thousands of people and striving to bring the public out of the dark. Like many others, I have 
had an unexplainable experience that still baffles me to this day. During August of last year, me and my family were backpacking in the San Juan Mountains of Colorado. I'm 17 now, and by this time I was aware of the many conscious beings that could possibly be residing in the area. And every day I attempted to reach out telepathically. Careful what you ask for. On the second night of backpacking, we set up camp at a small lake that sat in a bowl of granite cliffs and scree fields. There were other people there, and they were camped about 300 meters away. On this night, I was feeling very grateful and fulfilled, and foolishly, I attempted to send out a message that invited any being to come and take what they need from me, as long as I was kept alive. I waited until my dad went to his tent, where my mom and sister were sleeping, to climb into my tent with my brother. The night was very clear, so I left the tent fly open, which I had never done before, and I felt like bringing a knife with me into the tent. After almost 10 minutes of me and my dad being in our tents, the night was completely silent and I was on edge. Very soon after, I heard a noise that I would approximate to be 80 feet from the foot of my tent and it originated from the scree fields to my right. At first I thought it was a group of hooved animals because I could hear impacts from it hitting the ground and every once in a while it clicked against a rock, but the sound was constant. After hearing it for only a second though, I felt it was not. I felt unusually disturbed, so I started to repeat in my head, please do not come over here, and I changed my mind. It came down the hill a ways and turned 90 degrees towards our camp as it continued. I was frozen with panic as it picked up speed, and as it neared, I could tell whatever it was was rolling along the ground. I had no idea what it could be. The only thing I could hear was this heavy object rolling towards me very quickly. It traveled up the small circular three foot rise that our tent sat on and stopped at my dad's tent, which was right next to me, and went completely silent for about a second, and then started rolling again very suddenly and started towards the opening of the tent. Right by the tent opening was the edge of the little hill we were on, and I assume it went back down the rise because as the sound passed by my field of view, I did not see it. It could not have been more than two feet in diameter, or I would have seen it over the edge of the rise. Either that, it was not visible in the first place. It rounded my tent and stopped right behind my head, and I was too scared to move and risk making a sound. At some point, I started to feel strangely calm, and a very deep humming noise started in my right ear. I, I had I have idea how long, oh sorry, this must have meant, I have no idea how long this went on for, and at some point my memory became foggy, I do not remember if I heard it roll away. I'm sure you know how exhausting being terrified, being that terrified can be, and eventually I fell asleep. Adrenaline dump. The next morning I asked my dad if he heard it too, which I assumed he did because he usually snores when he sleeps, and I did not think that he could fall asleep in such a short amount of time. He said he did not hear it, and I did not tell him what had actually happened. I have an idea what it was, but it was alive. It was rolling around, and it scared the shit out of me. I don't know what to say other than that it sounded like a sentient rock about one to two feet in diameter was rolling around my tent. It could not have been an animal. It could not have been an animal. It could not have been a regular rock rolling down the hill. I have no explanation, and it sounds completely absurd. Sorry, this is not usually the type of story that you tend to have sent in, but I am convinced that it was not anything ordinary. I'm convinced that it listened to my invitation, and I'm grateful that it respected my request to be kept alive. I still am not opposed to having more experiences like it, though I'm very excited to see the pieces of the puzzle slowly fall into place. Thank you for all you do, Steve. Seth Dunn, Salt Lake City, Utah. All right, that's a different one for sure. Um, but just as you know, as we mentioned all the time, uh, if somebody has had something similar happen, especially in the same zone, you might want to drop down what you've seen in the comment section below this video for the person who just shared this to read about and learn, possibly, right? But you're right, I have, there's not much I can say about that, right? Except be careful what you wish for, and that goes to anybody. This next one's titled, Woods People. Hey Steve, thank you, for, thank you for standing in the gap for people that can't. I'm after 
Oh, sorry. After many people called the police, 911, about something cross 911, about something crossing the road in around 2017, 2018, in the town of Columbia, Mississippi, a buddy of mine has a family member that bought 40 acres just south of the town for recreational purposes. They put out some deer cameras in the fall of 2022. One Saturday night, he got a notification on his phone showing something had tripped the cams. These photos are what it sent to his phone. This happened in the middle of the night around 2 a.m. Sure, if you want to. My name is Robert P. I couldn't give a shit if someone thinks I'm off the ranch or not. I don't know, man. It's a little different. Long legs, looks like pants to me. I haven't a clue, <laughs> but I'll share it. I will share it. It's a little weird. All right, I shared it. Um, what does it look like to me? It looks like a person to me, but what do you say? What do you do? There's not much you can do. And I know one thing, it's very, excuse me, very rare for one of these beings to slip up and show their whole body on a trail camera. I like that, so I don't know, man. But I shared it. Um, yeah, you know, one thing I would, I would be somewhat curious about, I've had numerous people, like I said before, messaged me from, from either end of British Columbia telling me about a friend of theirs, Fort St. James, who claims to have a clear photo of two of these beings on a trail camera. And I said before, quote, he said he doesn't want to share them, quote, because, quote, sorry, well, you just got to be careful with these things. <laughs> Meaning photos, I don't know. But I, that, for some strange reason, that has had my curiosity, I think probably because of so many different people around the province have known this person and emailed me the same thing. But other than that, I don't know of too many other trail camera pictures that have, uh, trail cameras that have pulled it off, right? Anyway, moving on. Well, this is about COVID. Okay, hold on. Let me get back down to the bottom here. Somebody's been waiting for some time. This title Sasquatch, my lifetime of experiences. Well, I guess it's my turn. My name is Sharon Waddell, and yes, you can use my name. This will probably be a rather long email, as I'm 61 and I've had experiences since I was 17. This is a rather long stretch of several years when I unfortunately had to live in one city or another. In 1977, when I had moved back to Memphis, my mother's sister, my Aunt May, come to where I worked and I finally learned where my big brother, half-brother, mom's oldest child, was living. She gave me a phone number, so I excitedly called the number. He's living in a small northwestern town in Alabama. With much, dis with much discussion, I finally got permission from my parents to call John to come up and take me back with him for a week. I'll admit I was scared. I hadn't grown up. I was scared, hadn't, hadn't grown up with me, and I had never been away from my parents before. Things worked out, and I had a great time. The day before I was to go back to Memphis via Greyhound bus, my brother planned a camping trip up to a place called Black Ground Mountain. He, his wife and friend, and I as well as his dog Smokey, a big male German Shepherd, and thankfully a 12 gauge shotgun. My brother chose the perfect place to camp. It was one way, it was one way up and down, unless of course if you chose to jump off the rock edge about 50 feet down. We got our gear, sleeping bags out, and cooked up a meal sat around and talked until it was time to turn in. Smokey had been chained so I couldn't, so he couldn't wander off. I looked at the stars and marveled at how beautiful the night sky really was and drifted off to sleep. The next thing I knew I was awakened by a terrifying scream like anything I'd ever heard before. I could feel it in my chest. It had started out low but intensified due to a level so high and so shrill like nothing I'd ever heard before. Smokey was flipping out so hard that he had not been, that had he not been chained, he would have jumped off the cliff's edge. I was so scared that all I could do was scoot as far down in my sleeping bag as I could. Then I heard my brother let go of a 12 gauge round. I could have something that sounded like a, okay, we're missing some words. I could have something that sounded like it was going down the mountain. Must have meant I heard something the sound like it was going down the mountain. I peeked out and watched my brother fire off another round. 
By then, the rest of us come piling out of our sleeping bags. I asked my brother what that thing was. He told me he didn't know, but it was white and that he had shot at it and it turned and started down the trail. He said he knew one more shot would keep it running down that way it had come. Fast forward 2013, I'm now 53, and my husband and I decided to move to Kentucky. I've been looking for a place to buy. He had looked at several, and none had met his interest. We'd been brought into a small community in the smallest county in Kentucky. He didn't like this one either. He just happened to look across the road and up to and up to Ridge and asked a realtor about it. She said it had just come on the market the day before, so he asked to see it. As she unlocked the door and he stepped in, looked at me and said, this is it. That made its done deal. We finished the tour and went around and went to look around the outside. On the northwest cor front corner was a black locust tree. Don't know how much you know about these trees. They are true garden wood. As far as I know, the hardest wood in the state. It's about three inches in diameter. Had a slight lean, but was good and healthy. Tour done. Husband mine was made up. We paid cash for the place and were moving in a week later. Though busy, I did notice that something was wrong with that little tree. I told my husband and we went down to look at it. It had been bent over near the ground and was almost touching the ground. As I looked at it, I noticed that it had been split on either side of it, and the inside had been completely splintered. Work is for the weary, and we had so much more unloading to do, so we got back to work. We got moved in, cut the little tree down, and settled in. Not much happened after that till spring. We were each in different areas working when he started calling for me. I found him in back, but on the same side that little tree had been on. I said, Hey babe, did you haul it for me? He said, yeah, come look at this. I walked over to where he was and I saw these two young trees that had been uprooted. I said, those weren't like that when we moved in, were they? He said, no. Look, they're still having young green leads on them and the ground is still damp. I looked at him and asked, then how did they get uprooted? He never missed a beat and said, it was Bigfoot. Now I'm from Mississippi and he was from Michigan. I thought these creatures were I thought these creatures were real, see the story of 77, but he did, but he did too because of an experience he had in a deer camps of Michigan when he and a buddy had gone camping. His story, we had set up our tent and had cooked up some food, partied a bit, and gone to bed. At some point during the night, he had been awakened by a sound outside the tent. Now my husband was six foot two, he was laying there and heard footfalls and then something pushing the veil off the tent in. Sorry, he was laying there and heard footfalls and then something pushing. Oh, that probably was the wall of the tent in. My husband could stand up in the next in his in this tent without having to bow his head. He's now watching something considerably taller than him poking the tent down from the top. He heard some deep grunts, worked his way over to his buddy, and quietly woke him up. They said they listened to it until it finally moved away. They both started quickly picking up and packing their stuff up. They everything in the, threw everything in the trunk and took off and drove until they came up on a truck stop they had spent the rest of the night there. Tim, my husband, realized that he had forgotten his little Coleman camp stove. They both left, they both felt that in the daylight it was safe to go back and retrieve his stove. When they got back to the spot, he found the stove was gone. They both were sure this was where they had been camped because of the area where the tent had been. So that explains why he felt that Bigfoot had pushed down our trees. He dealt with them before. Anyway, at this point, it came to our, when it came to our trees, we figured these creatures had pushed them down. Things were quiet until we decided to get the chicks so we could have fresh eggs. Neither of us, of us were carpenters, but we managed to put up a pos plausible building and we and our chickens were set. No pun intended. The chicks grew to adulthood and eggs were forthcoming. One night after my husband had gone to bed, summer 2015, I realized I had forgotten to put the chickens up, not thinking anything of it. 
I turned on the batch I turned on the back porch light, opened the door, and took two steps out when a scream came from behind the chicken house. Yes, it's tall enough that a large creature is completely covered behind it. One that I had heard those many, many years ago on my black ground mountain with my brother. It started low and deep and raised in pitch and scale. So shrill, it left me paralyzed where I stood. A thought crossed my mind. If you come down here, you will disappear and never be found. It didn't have to worry. I simply couldn't move. I was frozen in place. It screamed and screamed. And to my absolute horror, another one answered this one with the very same scream from across the road you turn off onto the road I live on. I knew then you had to force yourself to move. I definitely didn't want to worry about two of these things. I managed to make a turn and left and take two steps towards and take two steps backwards which placed my back against the house all the while the first one continues to scream. Now that my back was against the house I was able to take two steps to the right and two steps backwards and I was back inside the house. I shot and locked the door, said to hell the chickens and went to bed, told my husband it didn't have the effect on him that it did me. Nothing else happened until after my husband's sudden death in March 2017. Sorry to hear about that. I was alone and in, bad, and in a bad state. I didn't sleep much. My dog started barking, so I threw caution to the wind, grabbed my 357, and out the back door I went. I could hear bipedal steps out in the small thicket of woods. Same woods where the small trees had been pushed over. And thinking it was a person, I said, I don't know who you are, but I'll shoot you, bury you, and never think a second of thought about it. I heard a couple more steps, so I pointed the 357 down toward the ground and fired three shots. I heard a couple more steps, then nothing. Turned around and came back in. I don't know why I thought it was a human. Because of all the groundhogs around here, it isn't safe to walk parts of that in, day, in the daytime, little line, let alone the nighttime. There's typos, you guys, I'm sorry. Things were quiet after that, until one bright and sunny morning in spring of 2019, I was sitting on my couch in the living room and just happened to glance up and to my right, where my dining room window is, also the back of the house, and to my utter surprise, I see a dark brown, over seven foot tall creature covered in fur. It played down its head and body like a German shepherd's, flat and neat. It played down its head and body like a German Shepherd's, flat and neat, walked past that window. I only caught the back half of its body and it was gone. I've been growled at from something in those woods. It was low and yes, scary. It was night and I was sitting with my back to those same woods. Lastly, at least for now, my last visual experience took place about three months ago. I remarried in November 2020. And my husband and I always start off bedtime with my head on his shoulder for a few minutes. I guess I should say that our bedroom window opens up to our screened in front porch and we always leave the porch light on when we go to bed with curtains open. When I went to turn over that night to sleep on my right side facing the window, he was standing there, no more than five feet from me with nothing more than a window separating us. He wasn't as tall as what I'd seen in my dining room window, probably no more than six foot. And his hair was more brownish red, and the hair on his cheeks had some gray in it. But I think what got me most were how human his eyes were. Light brown, his nose was a mix of human, and a little like a gorilla's. Oh, so there's a couple typos. Not scared me so bad. Okay, when he realized that I was seeing him, the look of startlement would have been funny had I not been scared had he not scared me so bad. There, how's that sound? He tucked his left shoulder in and dodged off to his right. That would have been well and good, except in a normal world, when I thought I knew, he could never have stood there. There is a large gray plastic container right in front of that window, and he's set, and a set of lightweight black metal shelves to his right, my left, but somehow, he had stood there and stared at me while I stared at him. 
I did forget one other experience which would have happened in 2018. I was in the guest bathroom of my home taking care of some necessary business. My little dog Susie and my big dog Chloe both present. When we heard the sounds of one very big and very pissed off sounding like gorilla scared me to death. I don't know why I was so pissed, but it sounded like it was going to tear my wall out. Terrified both dogs and left as quickly as Chloe could turn around. But she was built like a tank so it wasn't as fast as she wanted. Those are my stories, and as God is my witness, every damn one of them happened. My name is Sharon Waddell, and you may use my name if you wish. Thank you for what you do. My children think I'm crazy, maybe even my husband too, but I know I'm not. And I know what I've heard, and I know what I've seen. It's nice to know that someone believes us. It isn't quite as lonely anymore. Hope the grammar punctuation were okay. And that's it. All right. Sharon, thanks for that email. Absolutely appreciate it. There's a few typos in there that threw me off, but we got through it and everybody understood exactly what you're sharing, I'm sure. And for anybody out there bitching and complaining that I butchered that one up, sorry. Sometimes it's tough, but the punctuation absolutely throws me right off. And, uh, and it's just tough, all right? And I, I don't have the time. Imagine the time it would take if I pre-read every single one, did the punctuation, and then came in here to do this, and then edit them up. It's not possible. It's just not. I got too many other things going on, you know? But anyway, Sharon, I'm glad you sent that in. I hope it brings you somewhat, some kind of relief. And uh, you know you're not alone, and I know that you know what you saw, without a doubt. It's been seen so many times with so many other people. Mark, this is red, man, my thumb is hands killing me. I almost broke the damn thing five days ago and uh, started to get better, but yeah, I'm fidgety. Anyway, this is titled, Thank You, My Friend. <clears throat> Hi, Steve. I hope this finds you and yours well. I want to thank you, sir, for sharing my story. Since you shared it, I've been, uh, since you shared it, I've been contacted by several folks here in Maine that live relatively close to me that have had encounters as well. Perfect but encounters nonetheless. I truly, truly believe the platform you have for us to share is truly making a difference and bringing us together. Yes, it is. Your channel has given me an outlet to share with others whom I would have never been able to. Folks that live right here close that have had encounters. I encourage them to send their stories in as well in the hopes of them sharing may hold a piece for someone else. You giving others their voice to share without judgment or ridicule is spot on, brother. Having spoken with several of these folks near me and for me, I have found some pieces I was missing. And I think I was able to fit some pieces into other folks' stories they were missing. The world needs more men like you who are strong but have a kind spirit. Please don't stop what you're doing here because you are helping more than you could ever know, my brother. God bless you, Sarah, and your family. With heartfelt thanks, your friend Carl. Carl? Appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, make sure if you, if you know, even if they don't, I don't care. If people want to send in their experiences that you've met around there, so be it. If, if they feel that will help them, but it sounds like a group of people you're forming around there, the contacts. It sounds like they just might be getting the relief they need just from speaking to people like you in their community, right? Which is very important. And if they feel the need to share with what they have learned on their own. Uh, here because they feel it might help more people in a broader plane then Let her rip send it in and we'll get a share. All right Whoa, that's a book. I will not mark that as red. <laughs> I'll share that another day All right, what's this one? This will be the last one for today until I get back there might not be another one for a handful of days But I'll be back eventually might be something for your rabbit hole. Another one. Another rabbit hole meaning. <laughs> Excuse me. Steve, been enjoying your posting for a long time. I'm sure I've watched all your savvy videos, complete with your rants. Sometimes that's the best part. Excuse me, the people need to hear it. If they have ears to hear. Refreshing, straightforward views. It puts a responsibility in your in your in our own laps to think, to ponder, to wonder about the truth, the whys with sharing. It's good to hear your readers have a place to send in their experiences, and we can glean puzzle pieces and truth nuggets, besides the opportunity they get to get it off the chest. 
I'm sure with all your digging into what is happening in the world and your passions of life, you are ridiculously busy. But just thanks for being you and taking the time to share the things we wouldn't get to know about. I'm now in the long I'm now long in the tooth and have seen so many changes in the world in my time. But truth always comes up, just usually not as fast as we would like it. Mostly we gotta dig for it. That's why your format of just putting up in out there sorry, that's why your format of just putting it out there resonates with your round table family. I worked with an old mountain man 50 years ago, shared a lot, taught a lot, especially if you're paying attention. He would say truth has a ring to it. You know it when you hear it. He believed that most people, their lights were on, but nobody was at home. But all had potential. He emphasized that your intuition is your primary sense, not your sixth sense. Everyone has it in them, just usually not just aware of it. He always said one needs it in the mountains, needing to know what was out there and around the corner before you got there for surviving on all levels, with predators and humans, which are sometimes one and the same. He said you can always learn it by practice, usable in all situations, needed everywhere. He said, start by imagining what is out there or what a person is going to say or do. You will be wrong in the beginning, a lot, but with continuing to practice, your intuition will come to the surface. Eventually you will be right more often than not. You will know when something is true and will improve. Then you have awareness. Awarenesses. Yup, you aren't the only one that goes off on a tangent. <laughs> Do you think that you would take the help of you putting up a funding link? Just a thought, which I'm sure you already have. Just a big thanks to you and yours, and you're a blessed man. Still sorry for your loss of Mr. Macaroni. He never really goes away. Just lost my best friend, my Roddy. Yeah, it sucks. No, this isn't posting material, which is fine. I go down many rabbit holes searching. Pretty sure you don't need help with that, but I might send one if my intuition nudges me to. Brian Bach. Usable if you want. Okay, Brian, appreciate it, man. And a uh, quick note on that to answer your question with Edgar. I did I did ask Edgar if he needed help, because I, I assured him that there was plenty of it right here, right? Which you guys have proven in the past when I've shared links for uh, a couple of few other people that needed help. And he was... Uh, very appreciative of the offer, but he said that financially he's fine. His uh, his health plan covered him, and he was uh, he was okay in that department. So I guess all that would have been left would have been good thoughts and prayers, right? And um, on that note, still haven't heard from him or any of his family members. So let's hope for the best. And uh, a little later on, I will start reaching out to his colleagues and see what's up in that department there, right? But anyway, it's time for me to go. I wasn't reading too smoothly today, but unfortunately I had a handful of typos and too many emails back to back, which I feel sometimes sounds like I'm butchering the shit out of the whole thing. So I'm out of here. Time to start packing. I'm going, I'm going back to the wilds. Talk to you guys shortly.